the plan for today. So we were looking at all of these different, so we're looking at classical logic and we were looking at quantifiers last time. Um, plan for today is to get back to equality because this is one of the hardest topics in type theory and life. Um, so let's just do a little bit more of equality. Hopefully you had enough to get started with the coursework because it's due on Monday, unless you tell me otherwise. Um, but there's some still some interesting things to, to say. So uh, first of all, there, there's certain things here that you would expect of equality for it to really be called equality, right? So you would expect it to be symmetric, meaning that if x is equal to y, then also y is equal to x, shift things around. You would expect it to be transitive, meaning that if x is equal to y and y is equal to z, then already x is equal to z. You can do it in two steps, you can do it in one step. And you would expect it to be substitutive, meaning that if x is equal to y and you know p of x, then you should also know p of y. So all properties of x should also hold for y if x and y are the same thing. Um, so that's something that you would expect, but it's also something that's really useful. So all the time it happens that you have an equality that does the wrong way around, so you'd like to just flip it around. And you all know. the time you would, you have P of some X, such as P of N plus zero, and you would like to have P of N, and you know that N plus zero is equal to N, so you would like to use this principle to just make it work. Yeah, subs is really useful. Uh, for using equations to fix up types that don't fit exactly. Yeah, so we're going to see an example of this later. But first, let's actually prove this. Are there any other, any other uh, operators that have these properties of type zero? Uh, so, right, so, so, so we, we know that we yeah. have, that's a good question. So we know that we have also reflexivity, right? Yeah. X is equal to itself. And we have reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. That's called an equivalence relation. What are the equivalence relations in type uh, And they can, of course, be many equivalence relations. But this is the smallest one in the sense that it implies all the other ones. Okay. So this really is equality in type theory. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's an interesting exercise to show uh, that if you have two relations which are substitutive in the sense of subs, they imply each other. Uh, okay, so let's see if we can prove it. Um, the first thing we do is we make this door window a bit bigger. Um, we have here. Wait, sorry, can I just pop the yeah. uh, what, what colors to extend? Are you saying that um, if you have reflected, if you have an equivalent relation and substitution, then it's equivalent to equality? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. And in fact, so, so we are going to just prove this directly, but in fact, it's also a fun exercise to just use some. Uh, yes, I, I was going to say, uh, uh, it, it, why why is subs third? In this list? <laughs> well, it's because I want to do this by pattern matching. Do, do it by pattern matching, but also it's it, it is fun to redo yeah. it by subs. Yes. Um, if you have nothing to do Saturday night, then you can do that. Uh, okay, so what do we do here? So we have a P which has that X is equal to Y, and we want to show that Y is equal to X. And, and then we have some x and y, they are not in scope because they are implicit. We have an a, which is also implicit. And we don't know what the a is, we don't really know what the x and y are. Right? A is just some type, so x and y are just some elements of that type. We all know it could be empty, or it might not be empty. So what can we possibly do? Well, the only thing we can look at is to prove p that x is equal to y, right? It's the only data we have. So that's a pattern match on the P. Yeah. You see, you've got an equation. There's a variable on one side of it. Squash it. OK, and we see that, oh, in fact, P was referred because that was the only way to construct an equation. OK, big deal. But it is a big deal, because if we now look what happened, our goal has also changed. It used to be Y equals X, but because this is raffle, that meant that x must be equal to y, which means that our goal just became x equals x, right? And that's easy. They know how to prove x equals x. That's raffle. So it doesn't look like much afterwards, but, but really the pattern matching gave us a lot of information here. 
there is this, this triple equality and normal equals. There's sort of a weird relation. It's not exact relations between them. It's fair. Right. So this is the internal version of, of yeah. the definition of equality. Yeah. So it's a way to talk about definition of equality in the text. Okay. So you see if we can do transitivity as well. So it's quite similar, but this time we have two truths we can potentially have to match on, right? And then ask which one we should look at. That's a mean question because both of them. We could look at both of them, but let's do them one at a time. Start with P. Okay, and then I look what happened. Um, it used to be N equals Z, and I used to have that uh, Q was a proof that Y equals Z, right? But now I turn Y into X. So now we see that the Q matches the code exactly. Right? I could again have to match on Q and then give back Rethel, or I could just put Q here. But notice I had to pattern match on the P for this to make sense. If I just try to do it directly, then I will complain that it's not clear that this is the right thing. And if I want, I can do it the other way around. I can pattern match on the Q. That's going to turn Y and Z to be the same, right? So now this should say Y equals Z. But now by pattern matching, then we see that the P will also fit here. That's one way to do it. Third option, if you don't want to be biased, you can match them both. Yeah. Oh, but you can't get it more than one by English. So this is usually the case. If you can state something in the types when it comes to quality, then just pattern matching a ref and usually gets you there. So all the hard work is writing down the type that you wanted. Okay, should we try and do subs? So what do we have? So here we take some property P, take an equality, and we take something of type P of X, right? And we have to produce something like P of Y. Okay, any ideas how we should do this? Anyone else? Not Jake? You can match on the equality. On the equality, yeah. That seems to be what we do all the time, and that's absolutely right. It's the only game in town. And then we see that what used to be P of I has become P of X because X was equal to Y. And then the element that we have is perfectly fine in order to produce the thing we want. So after we pattern matched on Rethel, this just became the identity function. Taking the P of X, return the P of X. But that was not obvious here before we factor matched on it and made the meeting. So it doesn't look like much. It's just a one liner and it's a very simple one liner. It's really not doing anything. It's just pattern matching a reference and then returning the same thing. But it's really useful for fixing out things when, when you think that two things should, something should fit in a hole somewhere, but the hole is square shaped and uh, you only know that the set is equal to the square. So when you have an equality in your um, in your arguments, you always want to pass match on Rethel to just plug in all the values that you can have. Uh, in in at the very first approximation, yes. Okay. It's always something you should consider doing. I mean, yeah, you could lose some information this way. Right? Yeah, if you have an equation with a uh, a variable on one side, and the variable is also in the context, then. Uh, you might as well substitute that variable out. And that's what pattern matching will on the equation will do. Okay, so let's see how we would actually do this. In, well, so this is more about producing inequality again. So here I would like to prove that addition of natural numbers is associative, meaning that I should get the same thing if I first add the two first number two. First two numbers and then the last one, or if I first add the last two and then the first one, moving the brackets around. And the reason I bring this up is that this is also something we do all the time, right? We want to prove some equation for some reason, maybe we want to show that something is correct, or we need it to fix up some type of subs or anything like this. Um, so we want to prove an equation, and then how do we do it? 
Well, it's not going to just work to put ref on there because if it did, we wouldn't even think to state the equation, right? We will just get on with it. Uh, so usually this equation is not immediately true yet because the definitions that are involved in it, in this case, yes, plus, uh, are stuck somehow, right? And what do I mean by that? I mean that if I look at the definition of plus, then we see that it's defined by these two equations. But the first argument is either zero or a successor. But in the equation we have here, none of these first arguments are a zero or a successor, right? So we are stuck. We don't know which of the two equations to, to, to reduce with. So the game is always why is it stuck? And then we, we try to pattern match on the thing that gets it unstuck, we make a little bit more progress, and then it's stuck again, and then so on. So why is this equation stuck here? Uh, we said I was the first argument of plus that, that made it unstuck, right? So we can see that we can look at the first arguments of plus. There's one here, and there's one here, all of this. So we see that the outermost plus here is stuck because we don't know if this thing is a zero or a such. And this thing, we don't know if it's a zero or a such because we don't know if this n is a zero or a such, right? So the left hand side overall is stuck because n is such. And Happily, luckily, the right hand side is also stuck because the end is stuck, right? Because that's the left thing here. So the conclusion is clear we should pattern match on M. It's not wrong to pattern match on something else, it's just useless, right? If I try to pattern match on K, then that wouldn't help me get unstuck because I don't have any equations which says what happens when I look at the last argument of the bus. So it would just be a mess, but it wouldn't, I mean, you could persevere, but it wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. So let's pat them out on M. And let's see what happened. So we get two cases, zero or such. And in the zero case, this N has become zero. So this whole thing has become zero plus M, which is M. So this whole thing has become M plus K. And similarly here is N was zero. So this whole thing has become M plus K. It's much easier to prove that M plus K is equal to M plus K. That's correct. Is zero plus M equal to M in your definition? Uh, yeah, so if you don't remember that, it's always good to go and actually look at the definition. Oh, okay, so so it's the definition. defined by pattern matching on the first arguments, right? That's a choice, of course, when you define plus. But now we have to live with that choice and then do our, our analysis in the same way. Uh, okay, so that one is done with REPL. We load just in case. Let's look at this one. So now we see that the left hand side has reduced a little bit more, and the right hand side has reduced a little bit more. And what we notice is that both the left hand side and the right hand side start with a constructor such, right? Such of something equals such of something else. So we know that that first constructor coming out, that's already the right thing. Uh, we just need to make sure that this is equal to this. And you might remember how we did this. This is also something we do all the time. We want to say that, well, suck of something is equal to suck of something else. Then we use that everything is a congruence. So if I say cong of suck, right, that's going to take a proof that x is equal to y and give me back a proof that suck of x is equal to suck of y. So it's cong for congruence because suck here preserves equality. So if I do cong of suck of something, that's going to tell me that suck of something equals suck of something else, which is what I want to right? Okay, and then I still have to do that something is equal to something else. But if I now look at this goal here, it looks a lot like the thing we are trying to prove overall, right? So then this is just. Today is just an example of me saying we do this all the time, all the time now, because here we, we use recursive code and that, that should take care of it. So we plus the sock and mk, control c, control full stop, because I'm paranoid. And then I see that that has the type that I want. So I give that control c, control space. I reload just in case. Yeah. So that, that's the, the usual game. Just look at the equation you're trying to prove, ask yourself why is it stuck, and, and try to cut the match on the thing that makes it stuck. So 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could also do that one with rewrite, but. Um... Right. So rather than Kong, I could have rewritten by this recursive call here. Right. I don't need the brackets related to remove them. And then we see that we have rewritten on the left hand side to be the right hand side, and now this is for guest second. Second slide So again, that, that basically does the same thing. Yeah. So Kong is a special case of subst. And Rewrite is basically telling Agda to try and use subst in a sensible way. And it's often quite clever. OK, so I want to show you one more tool in the toolbox when it comes to quality. Uh, so I've just text that other fact about natural numbers that should be true, which this time says that times distributes of a plus. So if I have some times something that should be the same as a sum of products. So How is multiplication defined? We we should uh, probably that be because again we have to play the game why is it such, right? The outermost thing here on the right is multiplication. So this is going to be stuck because of something to do with multiplication. So let's look. And multiplication is also defined by pattern matching in the first argument. So zero times anything is zero. Such n plus one times anything is uh, m plus something. So this thing here should again be stuck because of this first argument. And why is this stuck? Well, this is again stuck because of its first argument. So it happens. And what about the right hand side? It's stuck because the first argument of plus. This is stuck because of the third argument of times, which again happily points to the name at the same variable. So let's start the match on M. Let's see what we need to do. Again, the zero case is easy. It's always a bad sign if the base case is not easy. Sometimes you need to start the match on more things, but in this case, we don't have to. Careful. And now here, we get something that looks, I hope, a little bit more complicated. So I want to make a point. I don't like when things are complicated. But in this case, you probably have to be quite clever to see what's really going on. So I would advocate for not being clever and, and do things step by step. Uh, so you see, here, up here, I open the module for equality reasoning. And this allows you to exactly do things step by step. So let's do that. Uh, so th there's a kind of a ritual to get this started. Uh, you can look in the module and see that there is absolutely no magic, but you don't need to understand how it works to use it. So the way the ritual begins is, so I open the module and then I say, I want to begin the quality reasoning. I'm going to leave a hole for the left hand side. I'm going to say that that thing is equal because of some question mark to something else. And then I'm going to say QED backslash QED, which is going to be my black box. So this is backslash QED backslash equal equals backslash open bracket slash mark backslash close bracket. Um, you can ask Connor what he thinks about that at some point. <laughs> uh, okay. leave, leave, leave those in comments. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. That was my point. That was my intention. Uh, Okay, so that's the ritual. Begin to begin, QED to end. That's Latin for uh, told you so. And then a step here in between. And then I reload the file. Um, the question mark turn into holes. We know that. And then my final trick is to do control C, control S, or solve everything. And do that, that is going to solve these two goals for me because this has to be the left hand side and this has to be the right hand side. If you don't like the machine doing work for you, you can put it in yourself. But 
Uh, okay, so that's how you get started. And then how do you can you do what happens if you do control U, control U, control C, control S? Uh, right, so I can also do that. Uh, because you see what, what has happened here is I've just copied the right hand, the left hand side where N has been instantiated to satellite. I could also try and normalize this as much as possible. I do control U, control U. As much station as possible. So control U, control U means normalize as much as you can, right? Uh, um, then we see that these things now have become slightly different because we have also normalized what um, SAC M plus K, etc. is. If you don't like doing that, you can also always put in a record stack. So that, that's the one without normalization, that's the one with normalization. Um, why is this equal to this? Well, that's why we have flexibility because it's just by computation. So, Refo as the justification for why this is equal to this. So, your equality takes in computation is equal up to yeah. the computation. Yeah, equal up to actually, okay. actually applying the equations for oh. definition. So, you can always do a step from here to here by refo. And then there's special syntax predicts if you want, where you just leave out justification. Um, okay, so the idea is that with the quality equational reasoning, you can do things step by step slowly. Right? So we started here by computation, we got to here, but now we still have to somehow get from here to here. Right? Uh, okay, so let me. It's not completely clear how the brackets go here, right? But then probably is the case that this binds stronger than plus because that's what we used to. So let me put in these brackets just in case. Okay, and then we just try to take small baby steps to get from here to here somehow. So probably we can look at this thing and see if we can see something we can do. And the thing that probably will jump out at you eventually is that this thing here, again, looks like the left hand side of the thing we're trying to prove, right? So it's always a good idea to try to get, I mean, we know that because we are pattern matching on zero and stuff, we know that most likely we're going to do a request call at some point. Um, so if we can spot something that looks like the left hand side of the request call, then it's good to do it. So let's see if we can do that. So the way I do that then is I copy the thing I have, I copy the thing below it, and I paste it in, and I change this to be the thing I want it to be. So replace this thing in the brackets. Okay. So now I have to justify this step, and then I still have to get from here to the end somehow, right? But justifying this step, well, the M plus stays the same, so that's a con. M plus, and then the final thing goes here, the underscore S, and something, and then here. Still have to show why this is equal to this, right? But that was the recursive code. So, what can figure that out? Mm -hmm. So then we see that we have actually made some progress here. Right? We started to get to where we wanted. Um, so what's missing to get from here to here? All the right things are in the right order, I think, right? Now M, now M times M. And um, we have k times m. It's just that here we have brackets on the right, and here we have no brackets. And um, you could see, well, maybe no bracket means that there should be brackets to the right. So it depends on how we have declared the fixity of these things. So we could be 
optimistic and try raffle, but then I have complaints. So life is not easy. So that probably means that the brackets go this way, because again, we're going to expect times to bind stronger than plus, right? So to try that hypothesis, we can just put the brackets in and reload. If we don't get an error, then that's where the brackets would wear all the time, that we are not visible, right? Um, so then we see here that we just have to justify this stuff. That is just a matter of moving brackets around, right? So we should be able to do that with the associativity of plus that we have up here. I try to do that. Okay, and then um, what does it take? It takes the M, the M, and the K, which are the first, uh, middle, and last things. So, what is my first thing? That's M. My second thing is M times M. And my last thing is K times M, right? Okay, so I see that's what I have, that's what I want. Doesn't seem to match, but it would match if I just swap the ground, right? So I would just apply sim to this. Then it matches up usually. So somehow, we magically, we're able to do it in small steps, but that's stretching out a small range too much. If we focus on one step. So that, that's sometimes useful. I mean, you see, I mean, if you didn't want to do this, you could use trans to of this proof and this proof, and that's exactly how it's implemented behind the scenes. It's just a, a fancy, clever trick to, to write out the steps. Yeah. And it produces something that's uh, much more readable than you'd get if you used transitivity as stated. Yeah. Because you can actually see the thing in the middle that actually holds the bridge up. Well, from the machine's point of view, that you could just as well use trans, but from a human yeah, yeah, yeah. it's much more readable. So we're doing, we're doing this for us. Yeah. From a machine point of view, you don't need any of the lines that have, don't have the equal signs. Uh, that's also the the bottom. Yeah, so I, yeah. that's, that's what you're saying, right? I cannot, yes. well, if I can do that, that's fine, because this was that by reference anyway. But from the machine's point of view, they don't, they yeah. don't the types are in yeah. the so you don't actually, the machine doesn't need those. Yeah, so it doesn't need you yeah. to say again, but this is the left hand side, this is the thing in the middle, this is the right yeah. hand side. That's the, it. The, the demo to do here, Fred, is uh, to uh, comment out all of the terms, leaving only the explanations, and write underscore, so right. underscore minus minus everywhere. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Telling the machine to figure out what goes in each of these places. So underscore means you figure it out on the right hand side. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't figure it out on these would turn yellow to signify I don't know what this is. Yes. So the, 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 uh, the terms that we're working between are for human consumption only. And of course, you could just write them in comments like I just did, but, but then the comments wouldn't be checked. And um, this way, the machine is actually checking if we agree about what we're doing. Uh, okay, so we have a little bit more time. So let's also look at another example of using subs. I don't think we'll get the last bit, but that's okay. Um, so uh, here's the motivation. If you think about lists, um, there is a slow way and a fast way to reverse a list. It's the slow way, you pattern match on the list. It's empty, then you return empty, that's easy. It's non empty, then you reverse the tail of the list, and then you append with the singles on the list on the right. Why is this slow? It's because this append function is going to go through all of this in order to just add one element at the bottom. So that means that as you go through all the list, then you're going to all the time go through this, and it's going to be n plus n minus one plus n minus two times we go through 
here most of this that's going to be n squared into two. Is, uh, is there a cons here? Uh, uh, you mean a uh, 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 snot in the first ones? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. stop. Uh, well, I mean, you can define it by appending like this, but the, the data structure by design is really biased towards access from the front. Right? Okay, sorry, yeah, it says a stock, it's still defined. Yeah. Um, but yes, you could, instead of returning a list, you could return a backwards, but then you would still have to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here is how you probably want an algorithm starts to do it slightly faster, right? Where instead of just reversing one list, you take an accumulator list that you return at the bottom case, uh, at the empty case, and then you just cons things on top of the accumulator. So if you start with an empty accumulator, you're going to put things on backwards, and then you return it. Uh, so that's going to be linear in, in the list, which is much better. Um, but let's see if we can do the same thing for vectors. So you can do this definition for vectors, I'll, I'll leave that as an exercise for you. And for if you have a, an empty Sunday evening. Um, but let's see if we can instead do the accumulator fast version for vectors. So you remember a vector was a list that had its length displayed in its type, right? So here I have to give a length, here I have to give a length, here I have to give a length. So the first thing I have to figure out is how to actually give the type of this reverse with an accumulator for vectors. So Hopefully, it's not so hard to see that here actually just take some vector or some length. And then what should the length for my accumulator be? Well, in the beginning here, there is no relationship between the length of the accumulator and the length of the list, right? The length of the list is empty, but the length of the accumulator is, is whatever we have accumulated. So I would claim that here I should just also take an arbitrary m, which so far has no relationship between m and m, right? But what is the output length of this? So I want it, I mean, I could try and say, well, this should be n, because in the end, I want to reverse the list. Let's try that. Uh, but then we see, I take the accumulator first, so I want this to be M. And I just... Which one's the accumulator? Uh, it's the first one. They call... Okay, so I'm saying that I'm going to ignore the length of the accumulator and then I do this, but um if i now try to do this what i do i pat the match on excess um, here i would like to return the accumulator right so the same that the length of the accumulator is n and i want to go to be zero because i said that it should be the same as the list so that's not going to work so instead my claim we should add the lengths together here because what are we doing in effect? We are adding more things to the accumulator and then in the end we return the accumulator. So if the accumulator was not empty to start with, we're going to get M plus at length items. Right. All right. And there's some craft here in choosing which way around that plus goes. Yes, indeed. You could be tempted to write M plus at length. But then um, something went wrong down here. So that's, it, didn't run, it didn't go wrong when we did it the other way around. So let's do it this way around for now. Why is this a problem? Well, it's because it's not obvious that M plus M is the same as M plus M, right? So that's something we need to prove. And we're going to see that here as well. Because here, if the list we started with was empty, we would like to return the accumulator. But then here we have. A small type dispatch as well, right? Because the accumulator is length n, but the goal it wants has length n plus zero. So if I just try to return up here, because I want some sense the algorithm to be the same as up here, right? Then I get an error that n is not the same thing as n plus zero, which is sometimes looks a bit baffling. But why 
Why is this not obvious? It's because in the definition of plus, there's no equation that says that m plus zero is equal to m, right? All we know about plus are these two equations, and they don't talk about m plus zero. They just talk about zero plus m. But we should be able to prove that m plus zero is equal to m, because otherwise something is really wrong with our definition of plus, right? So this is how it usually goes. Uh, you have some idea that I want to return this thing here, but something in the type doesn't quite match up. And that's exactly when we use subst, right? So we say subst, what's our property? It's with a something where something is the thing that doesn't match up. So in general, you can say lambda sad goes to with a sad goes in the place where there's a problem. And then if you're feeling smart, you can see that, well, a lambda said, and then something applied to said, that's just the same as my k, in this case. Then I leave a question mark for the proof that the things really are equal, and then I have the thing I want. You see here, we are now fast with proving that m is equal to m plus zero. You know. So uh, it might, often it's a good idea to do that at the top level definition. Uh, but if you think you're not going to really care about this proof again, you could do it in the back doors. And then often it's a good idea to give a good name to these things, but if you don't know a good name, then I usually call them lemma, yeah. small fact. That is useful. Uh, so I want to say that for every um, m, m plus zero. Okay, so I do that in a way clause. And before I start proving this fact, I like to check that it actually works. So lemma m. Right. And now we are back to playing the game. Why is it statue, right? Left hand side, well, there's no nothing stuck here, but the right hand side is stuck because plus is stuck in the first argument. So we have to patch another down. So uh. we do. Free variables are the ultimate stock thing. Right. <laughs> okay, and then we get the base case, which is reassuringly easy. Um, we get the step case, which looks very much the kind of things you've seen. It's suck of something of both sides. Suck. And then it looks exactly like an impressive chord. So we do an chord. Okay, so that takes up the type of that. See if we can do this case. So what did we want? We wanted to do a reverse with x const on to the accumulator and x's. And then again, we see that this is a small problem in the type here. So let's see if we can fix this up. Okay, so could optimistically try REFL, doesn't work. So then again, we're going to try to do lemma. If you do it on a web loss, you can always call all of them lemma, which is a big advantage. Uh, okay, and then a priori here, we could say M, M, natural numbers, and then I want to does where reset your, as in your the N M here would be in a different scope to the M. Uh, right, right. So everything in the rest of, everything outside here is also in scope here. So then you can override it with the N M dots, right? Uh, right, yeah. So this is more local, so it's shadowing than the previous one, yeah. And um, I do want to introduce them locally here because I know to pattern match on them, right? So. So that the N M is the model, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to rename the M one to M. Okay, and then um, okay, why is it stuck? It's because of this first argument on both sides, right? Okay, this is easy. So it's a shock when, when at some point it doesn't work anymore. In this case, you actually have to do some work. Uh, and here is a con suck something. That looks like it was called. So 
um, MS inferable. It's not in scope here because I only brought the MS, so some lazy and put in the story about that. Right. So in both of these cases, we have to fix up the type so to just make it work. But um, what's going to happen if you have, right? So let's actually do a test. So here I implemented this. So T is the reverse of one, two, three. Okay, so what's going to happen if I do. Control C, Control M for normalize. Um, what's going to happen? Are we going to see all of these subs, et cetera, show up? Probably not since they don't like it. Right. So we just get your reverse list because all of these numbers are concrete, right? So we're just going to compute down to REFL. And then we, the definition of subst was that subst or record of something was just something. Right? So for concrete things, you never see these, these proofs showing up. It's just to, to com, come inside in the meantime that things make sense. Right? So we don't understand. And if, you, if you're in the business of writing a compiler for these things, you can erase all of it. You don't get that extra, extra overhead. This, yeah. So with two methods, they're, they're identical. Like the, the proof of them is identical. It sets you just a lot of different names, but the yeah. fact the proof is identical because you call the name the same. Is there a standard way of writing this that we just write the uh, functions? They're not very long to write, which is what there's no point why. Uh, right. So it looks like they are identical indeed, but they are actually they're different because they're different, different types, qualities. Right? I'm wondering if there's a like because the the um is there a, something you just put in that quality and it just does it all. Um, a map of some form, uh, so it wouldn't really be on the map, right? Because it really depends on the quality. No, it's it's like, still, is there like if you could it, imagine writing a so called tactic that would try to do this in the base case, you would always blindly refl, return refl yeah. in the step case, you could blindly do a common sure. sack and then, yeah. um, but for, for these small things, it's probably easy to just do it. I was just wondering if that was a jet more general thing going on, yeah. Uh, there is a more general thing going on uh, if you're fiendish um, and uh, into uh, uh, finite calculus. But uh, uh, that's to say uh, two functions on natural numbers agree if uh, they agree at zero and if their forward differences agree. Um, but, uh, you know, so an awful lot of um, of these uh, lemmas are, you get the same thing at zero and both sides take the same step whenever you feed a successor in. They add the same thing on. This is, this is saying that shit exists. Uh, so it's a, a, there's a, a, a very sort of you you can't there's a particular pattern of an inductive proof about uh monotonic functions on the natural numbers so ones where you stick you you add an extra one to the input and something extra gets added to the output okay. and that's what we're seeing so here it's even you add an extra one to the input you get an extra one on the output. That's why it's just Kong suck all the way along. And so for the more general monotonic things, you just put in whatever the difference is between uh, the, well, the input. So it's a little bit tricky to formulate the right? And you have to see the MS of parameters so that it really is a function from end to end. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we should we should stop here because I'm prepared a little bit of a if there was time segment, uh, but I think I'll just leave this for you. If you're interested, you can take a look, it'll be in the file. Uh, the basic idea is 
So you guys consider what, what does it mean to prove equalities at different types? For example, equality at the pair type should be a pair of equalities. Equality at a dependent pair should be a dependent pair of equalities, et cetera. And then um, unfortunately you hit a little bit of a snag when it comes to functions. Because you would like two functions to be equal if they are pointwise equal, they're equal for every element. But that's not provable in Agnes, so we are normally going to just postulate different pieces. So, is that, so is that true? I, I mean, can you come up with a function where it's equal, not yeah, equal the elements, not even the full stop? So, so it's undecided in the oh, sense that there are some models where, yeah. where it's true, there are some models where it's false. But the models we care about, I mean, when we normally think about functions, we want this to be true. So, we just postulate it. Yeah, so so the thing is that the definition that we gave for equality or that the library gives for equality says uh, things are equal if they have the same implementation. And so, I mean, in, in ultimately, it's a philosophical question, I guess, right? Do you want quick sort to be equal to bubble sort? Or yeah. would you? Yes. I could distinguish them. So often you want to say that they are equal because they produce the same outputs. But maybe you want to be more intentional and, and consider them to be different. I'm just thinking you like to kind of find it feels like maybe not to be equal. But okay, so I think we will stop here. Um, I'm going to stop the recording, etc. And then if you have any burning questions about the postwork, I'll, I'll be around for a bit.